Amen. Ah, good to see you. Praise the Lord. Give me a second here. We're going to be moving on. I want to thank you all for joining me. Yep, it's that time of the week. Amen. And I want to thank you all for joining us and, and being a part of this intercessory prayer week. Amen. Tomorrow is another day that we come together in intercessory prayer. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done and all that you are doing. There's nothing, Father, that you don't see. You see it all. There's nothing that you don't hear. You hear it all. Father, and I thank you, Father, that as we release your word back to you, that you will not only hear your word, but you will honor your word and you will perform your word with signs following. So, Father, I thank you right now because I know, Father, that all things do work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. So I bless your name and I give you glory, honor, and praise for it in the name that is above every name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. Good to see you. Amen. And I thank God for you. Glory to God. Tomorrow is our Thursday where we come together as a group of prayer warriors and we pray, we intercede. Amen. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be interceding at 9 a.m. for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. That's, now, you know, all of us need to be praying for Jerusalem. We need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, they they about to move the embassy out of uh, over into over into Jerusalem. They take it out of Tel Aviv, put it in Jerusalem. So they are making Jerusalem the capital. Amen. They are making Jerusalem the capital. So we need to be praying for everything that God is doing. They're to be carried out according to the will of God and according to the purpose of God. Amen. And I know that a lot of people don't understand this, but this is this is this is God's will. And the will of God will be carried out. Amen. And I believe that right now is the time that we can see that God's hand is moving fresh upon our land and upon our people. Amen. And not only our people, look at Look at uh, what he's doing. Look at what he's what he's doing around the world right now. God is God is really showing himself strong right now, and it's good for us to be a part of it by praying for the peace of Jerusalem, that you may be blessed because you have lifted up the name that is above every name. Amen. I see the people that's coming in from Pakistan, from India. Amen. From Alabama. Amen. People are joining me from all over, all around. I praise God for you. Amen. Amen. From uh, coming in from all, all over the place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But anyway, I want to thank you all for joining us. Amen. And then at 12 p.m. noontime, we're going to be praying for the body of Christ. We're going to be praying for our loved ones, our, our sons, our daughters, our children. Amen. Our mothers and our fathers. Amen. We're going to be praying for the body of Christ at 12 noon. We're going to be asking God for a spirit of unity and a spirit of one accord to be upon the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. That we all will hear what the spirit of God is saying, that we will all follow the plan of God as we hear what the spirit of God is saying. Amen. Let there be no dissensions between the fivefold ministry gifts, but let us all walk in love with one another. Amen. Because we all our father's children, regardless of our uh, uh, callings, regardless of where we stand. Amen. 
If you are a born again child of God, you're just as important as the apostle of God. You're just as important of the prophet of God. If you are a born again child of God, you have a purpose that God has already ordained for your life. Amen. So don't think that you, because you are, because you are, uh, uh, don't have a title, don't mean that, don't mean that you're not important. Every one of us, every one of us is important. Amen. Every one of us is, is important. We, as we, as we, as we accomplish our purpose and our plan, guess what? The world going to be a better place. Going to be a better place. Amen. When we make a stand, a bold stand to do what God has called us to do. Now, sometimes you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have to go through some things for that to happen, for that to take place. But listen to me, folks. If you're not going through something, that means that you, you're not accomplishing nothing. Amen. But if you're going through something, that means you, you, you're taking back territory. You're taking back ground. You're accomplishing something for the kingdom of God. And I just want to encourage you today to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God is still God. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, God is still God. We can't help him. We can't stop him. But we can always follow him as God. Amen. He's our, he's our savior. He's our strengthener. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's everything that we want him to be. Amen. So at 12 noon or 12 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to be praying for the body of Christ. We're going to be praying for the fivefold ministry gift. We're going to be praying for our brothers and our sisters, our daughters and our sons and our husbands and our wives. Amen. Don't forget to pray, don't forget to pray for your, your spouse. Amen. Because sometimes, sometimes they may not, they may not understand, they may not, they may not even know that you're praying for them. You, they don't have to know every time you pray for them. Pray for them anyway. Amen. Pray for them anyway, because you see, they need your prayers, especially if you're the man of the house. That spouse, that female, that 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 that, that woman of the house, she needs your prayers. Amen. She needs your prayers. That's your partner. She needs your prayers. Amen. So pray. Make sure you pray for her. Amen. And all of you that are that and stand in need of prayer, you have you know you may have a children that have disappointed you and broke your heart. You need to pray for that child. Amen. You need to pray for that child because God is able to restore. He's able to deliver. He's able to restore. You know, but we got we have our part to play. We have our part to play as well. Amen. So we have to do what we're supposed to do. And God is going to do what he's supposed to do. He just wants us to do what we're supposed to do. And our first obligation is to seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven? We'll forgive your sin. We'll heal your land. Amen. God will do his part if we would just only do our part. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you today. Amen. Uh, maybe, maybe, more than, maybe more than a couple, but uh, right now I want to take you to the book of Ezekiel. This is the scripture that God gave me when he told me to start doing this. And I've been holding on to this scripture ever since. Ezekiel chapter 22. And verse number 30. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. And I believe that this is for us all. Amen. And it says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. See, God is looking for people to pray for the land. And when we pray for the land, he also wants to pray for the leaders of the land. Because if our leaders is covered in prayer, I'm telling you, we will lead a quiet and peaceful life. According to the scripture, I want to take you to another scripture because of, because of what I just said. I want to take you to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Amen. And I want to look at verse number 1. It says, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1 says, I exalt therefore, first of all, supplication, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. See, God is calling for intercessors. He's still looking for people that will, uh, that will humble themselves and pray. Amen. God is still looking for intercessors. And let me ask you a question today. Will you be the one that, 
that will answer the prayer? Will you be the one to answer the call to, to pray? Because God is looking for you. And if you say yes, guess what? He's going to he gonna accept you. He's going to receive you for that purpose. Amen. So he said in verse number Verse number one said, I exalt therefore, brother. It means I exalt therefore, first of all, that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And then look at verse number two. For kings, that means the that means the president, the, the kings, and those that are in authority, those the lead, those that are in authority, the leaders of our land. Amen. The ones that God has set in the highest office of the land. Amen. So that means that, that's talking about our president, Donald J. Trump. May, you may not like him, may not want to pray for him, but we have an obligation before God to pray for him. Amen. People are never going to own up to everything you expect, but that don't mean that you shouldn't do what God has asked you to do. See, faithfulness and understanding that the faithfulness is, is what God is expecting out of us. To understand the will of God is to understand he wants to be faithful and, 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 and true to everything he asks us to do. And what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to pray. He's asking us to pray. And I believe that we should. Amen. I believe that we should. And that's why at 3 p.m. tomorrow evening, we're going to be praying for the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. We're going to be praying for his family. We're going to be praying for his administration. We're going to be praying that God will give him supernatural wisdom and knowledge to carry out his assignment. We're going to pray for his health. And we're going to be praying. We're going to pray that God will touch his body, touch his mind, his will, his emotion, that he will, that he will hear what the spirit of God is saying to him in these last days. Amen. Folks, let me tell you something. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. And we need to pray for our leaders. And then we need to pray for our local uh, uh, polices. Amen. Our police force. We need to pray for our local police force. Why? Because they need your prayers. Otherwise, they're going to be shooting up your neighborhood. <laughs> How many of you are tired of that being happening? It's time to start praying for our, our community polices, our neighborhood polices, our city polices, our state polices. Amen. And then we're going to be praying for our military. Our military, because they're the one that policing up. They, they're the one that is, is watching our borders to make sure that our, our nation stays safe. Amen. And keeping the the bad men at bay, you know. So we need to pray for our, our military personnel, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. We need to pray for them and the Secret Service people. And we need to pray for these people. Amen. The, uh, because if we don't, then they may start doing some things that you may not be pleased with. But if you pray for them, then God is able to get through to them. Amen. Because all things work together for good to them that love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. If you love God and you love his people, then you'll pray for you pray for these people. Amen. You pray for these people. So we're gonna be praying at 9 a.m. once again for uh Benjamin Netanyahu, uh the prime minister of Jerusalem. Amen. We're gonna be praying for him, his family, and all of all of his uh uh, uh, administration that, that's under his leadership. Amen. Then we're going to be praying for the fivefold ministry gifts. We're going to be praying for the body of Christ at 12 noon. Then at 3 p.m. we're going to be praying for uh, the United States of America, the leaders, our leaders, and we're going to be praying for our, our president. Amen. And all and, and our senators, our governors. Amen. And our police officers. Amen. We need to, we really need to pray for our police officers. Amen. That's very important. Hey, that's very important because uh, we we if we pray, we can stop a lot of that that gun happy stuff that's happening. Amen. We can stop a lot of that stuff through prayer. You may not be able to stop it from the natural standpoint, but in prayer you can stop it. Amen. Now, I want to encourage you because I noticed that by walking around throughout the day and taking care of my daily activities, I'm still running. I'm still seeing people. Everywhere I go, uh, sneezing and coughing and hacking and, and everything else. And, and let me tell you something. God wants to touch each and every one of you. If you need healing, God wants to touch you. I know you might hear, you, you hear me preach on this a lot. 
And I, and I do because I know what God did for me. Amen. I know what God did for me. But I also know what he would do for you if you would allow faith to be established in your heart along this line. If, especially if you're sick and if you need a touch from heaven. God will not only touch your body, God will bring health and healing and restoration to your body. Amen. I'm a living witness. I used to be sick, very sick. Amen. Then one day, as I was uh, lying in my bed crying because I was hurting so bad, God spoke to me. He said, get up and read your Bible. I mean, he spoke to me kind of, he, like he was upset with me about something, but he spoke kind of harsh. Get up and read your Bible. He spoke to my heart very strongly, firmly too. And it kind of started me. So I got up and I got up and I read my, I started reading my Bible. Amen. And then uh, as I was reading uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 15, 16, and 17, the word of God began to jump off the pages at me. And, and I began to read it over and over and over again. Those few scriptures, I began to read it over and over again. Why? Because God was minister, God ministered to me through those scriptures. When those scriptures began to jump off the pages, I, I had to sit back a minute and, and say, God, what are you trying to show me? What is it that you're trying to show me? So I, be, I read it over and over and over again. And I want to take you there for a second. Amen. I want to take you there for a second in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, the last book of the book of Mark, the last chapter in the book of Mark. Amen. And let's look at verse number, number 15, 16, 17, and verse number 18. Now notice all these scriptures are written in red. So this was Jesus talking. This was Jesus talking. So we are studying what Jesus said. We're not studying what one of the apostles said. We're studying what Jesus said. And that's what, and I'm telling you folks, it will literally change your life if you would receive this. Amen. It says, and he, and Jesus, in verse number 15 said, and he said unto them, talking about Jesus, he said unto who? He was talking to the disciples. He was talking to his followers. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Look at verse number 17. Very important. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice what he said. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now notice what he said he wanted them to believe in. He wanted them to believe in what? His name. His name. Yes. He wants you to believe in his name. Why do he want you to believe in his name? Because there's power in that name. Why do he want you to believe in that name? Because there's deliverance in that name. There's peace in that name. There's wholeness in that name. You might think, well, pastor, I don't understand why do I have to believe in that name? Because it is the name of the only begotten Son of God, whom God sent into this earth to go to the cross for you and me, giving up his life as a ransom, as a payment for our sin. Amen. For the Bible said, we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But as by one man has sinned, so death entered the world. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. John 3, 16. And then verse 17 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the only begotten Son of God. We have to believe in that name. Because that's, that name has the ability to bring you to a brand new hope, a brand new beginning in life. You might think that you have done so many things that, that there's no way out. You, you might think that you... you you too bad. You, you're not good enough. Let me tell you something. When Jesus went to that cross, he went to the cross for all of our shortcomings. He went to the cross for all of our wrongdoings. 
He went to the cross because he knew that if he didn't go to the cross, none of us would be able to, be able to make it to the, to, to, our, to back to our Father who created us in his image and after his likeness. Amen. So we have a right to believe in that name. We need to believe in that name. Look at verse 17 again, Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, now he's talking about signs is going to follow the believer, the one that believe in his name. Signs are going to follow the one that believe in his name. Well, what signs are you talking about? Well, let's read on. Let's read on. Amen. And uh, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? See, you have the power to cast out devils when you believe in that name. To speak with new tongues. When you believe in that name, I'm telling you, there's a new language that God will impart to you. Amen. And then he said in verse 18, that take up serpents. And if you drink any of that thing, it shall not hurt you. Amen. So we see that God, divine protection is released through that name. The name of Jesus. Divine protection is released up over your life through that name. Amen. Now, let's look at what it goes on to say. The latter part of verse number 18 said, They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the one that believes in his name. Amen. If you are a believer, guess what, folks? He's talking to you. He's talking to you. Amen. There's an anointing that God has placed upon this particular word that I'm sharing with you to set the captive free. Remember what he said in Luke 4, 8, 4, 19? Let me just turn there. I could just quote it, but you know what? Sometimes it's just better to read it. Amen. That way, you, you know, you can direct so others, others can get a hold of the scripture that you're reading so they can read it right along with you. So I'm looking at Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Know what he said in verse number 19? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, do you believe that it's acceptable that, 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 that God releases anointing, his healing power upon you? today. Amen. Especially you that are in need of healing. Amen. Wouldn't it be great if God would just touch you right now and tell you this is your gift from me to you at this time of the year? Amen. Oh, friend, let me tell you something. God longed for us to believe his word and to Believe in his name. Amen. God longed for the people to yield not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge him. Amen. God is looking for people that will, that will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. This is what God is looking for. God is looking for people that love people. I'm going to say that again. God is looking for people that love people. Amen. Why? Because if you love people, you wouldn't go around putting your mouth on people, but you'll go around reaching your hand out to people, extending your hand to people. Amen. Why you want to extend your hand to people? Because some people may need an extended hand. Because they don't have everything that you have. Amen. God has blessed you. And there are some that really need a touch from heaven right now. And some of you that listen to me right now, you may be one of those that is looking for a touch from heaven. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I needed a touch from heaven, I didn't have any money, didn't have no insurance. Didn't have nothing but a lot of pain running through my body. And I'm lying in my bed crying like a baby. And God said, get up and read your Bible. 
And I got up, I began to read my Bible and God brought me to this scriptures that I just read to you in the book of, out of the book of Mark chapter 16. God brought me to those scriptures that I read to you out of, out of Mark chapter 16. And let me tell you something. I read those scriptures over and over and over and over several times. And, and you know what? When I still go back and do it now. Why? Because I know what God did to me when I didn't have nothing. And he did to me while I didn't have nothing. He'll do it for me while, even while now, while I got something. Amen. If he do it when I didn't have nothing, I, I, there's, he'll do it for me when I got something. And I'll tell you what, when symptoms begin to come upon my body, I begin to speak to those symptoms before they, begin, before they take a hold to me. I begin to speak to those symptoms. Why? Because he's given me power over all the power of the enemy. You know, God is not putting sickness on me. God is not trying to put the disease on me. But if I look at, but if I look at the book of Luke chapter 9, in the book of Luke chapter 9, Notice what he said in verse number one. He said, and he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. Amen. So if God gave us power and authority over all devils, there's no reason why I should be allowing a devil to interfere with my walk, to interfere with my relationship. Amen. Because God has given me power and authority over all devils. And if I'm walking around sick, amen, knowing that God has given me the power to speak life, amen, then I can't blame God when I don't receive my healing. If I don't receive my healing, it's my own fault because God has given me his word and he's given me power and authority, amen, to exercise his word, amen. Now notice what else it says. Look what it, look what it says again here in the book of Luke chapter 10. This is chapter 9, I mean. Look at verse number two. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Who is he talking to? He's talking to them that believed in his name. He's talking to his followers. He's talking to those that put their trust in him. Are you one of those that have put your trust in him? Then he's talking to you. He's talking to you. Now let's look at chapter 10. Look at chapter 10. And I want us to look here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Look at chapter 1 here. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10. And verse number 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. Amen. So we see here in chapter 9. In chapter 9, he called them together, the first initial 12. He called his disciples together, the first 12, and he gave them power and authority over all devils. And he sent them to preach the kingdom and to, to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, this is what God did. Amen. This is what God did. This is not something that man did. This is what God did. Amen. This is what God did. And then, and then in chapter 10, in chapter 10, Verse number one, it says, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them to before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. What happened? He sent the first initial 12 out and he saw the effect that they was having and he saw that the workload was, was about to overtake them. So he ordained 70 more disciples. He ordained 70 more disciples and he empowered them also. So you might think, well, when he gave the first 12 the power, he said, that's all they did. No, he did more than just give the first 12 a power. He gave uh, 70 more power. Amen. He gave 70 others power. Notice what he said concerning them. In verse number verse number two, he said, therefore he said unto, therefore he, therefore said he unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers were few. See, those 12 were just a few people. Those 12 were just a few people. He needed more laborers. Amen. And let me tell you something. He's still looking for laborers today. He's not, he's, he's still looking for people that are willing to, to take up the cross and to follow him. He's still looking for people today. 
Amen. He still look for people today. Now notice what he said in verse number two again. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lamb among wolves. Amen. As lamb among wolves. Then he tell you what to expect while you're going. Amen. Now let's look down here. Look down here. At verse number. Look down here now in verse number uh, 17. Verse number 17. Because you see, they have honored him by going out when he sent them. And now that he has sent them, verse number 17, it catched the reaction of them when they came back in. Amen. It shows, it shows what, what it showed what they experienced when they came back in. Notice what he said here in verse number 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You see where the power is? The power is not in my name. The power is not in, in uh, 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 some preacher named there because he has a famous name. Amen. The power is in the name of Jesus. So what happened to that famous preacher? He learned how to use the name. <laughs> he learned how important it was to use the name. And that's why he was able to accomplish what he was able to accomplish because he believed in that name. He established his faith and his confidence and his trust in that name. What name are you talking about? In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Glory to God. Amen. So the seven to return, they didn't return complaining about how the devil beat them, how the devil overthrow them, and how the devil took advantage of them and robbed them blind. No, that's not how they come back. They came back. The Bible said they came back rejoicing. Amen. Notice what he said in verse number. They came back with, with they came back with joy in their heart because they were able to see the enemy being defeated, and they were excited about that. They were excited about that. Amen. Notice what he says right here in verse number seventeen, At, uh, Luke chapter ten, verse seventeen. And the seven returned again with joy. Notice he said with joy, and they came back saying, Lord. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Through thy name. So that shows us where the power is at. Amen. Then verse number, then the next verse, verse number nine, verse number 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19, very important. Because see, this is where he's showing you that you today have been given power. Amen. You've been given power today as the disciples receive in their day. God says right here to us, this is written in red. This is Jesus talking. He said, behold, I give unto you power. He's talking to you, the believer, the one that believe in his name. He said, behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and scorpions and over all, notice what he said, over all the power of the enemy. Then it goes on to say that, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means you don't have to allow fear to dominate your heart, your mind, your will, your emotion. Fear should not have no place in your heart. Amen. And your vocabulary should not have anything to do with doubt and fear coming out. Amen. You should always think, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. Amen. I am more than a conqueror because I am a child of God. Amen. I am a child of God. The Bible said, and we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. So we need to understand everything that God has given us to walk in in these last days. God has given us everything that we need to accomplish the task that he has given us. Amen. He's given us everything that we need to accomplish the task that he has given us. Glory to God. And so I just want you to be, I just want you to be aware of what God is doing. Amen. God wants you to have faith in him through the, through his word. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. And so I'm, this is what this is what God is saying to us, folks. He's he's telling us that that we have been given a great responsibility as children of the Most High God. Great responsibility. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. And I want to encourage you. Don't allow your enemy, the devil, to stop you from reaching out. You may be, you may have to reach out daily until you're totally free. Don't worry about it. Just keep reaching out. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. If you, as long as you're reaching out, you got a chance of coming out of that gutter. You got a chance of coming out of that ditch. But if you stop reaching out, then you may not make it out. He might, the devil might just hold you down there and destroy you right where you are. But if you begin to reach up and say, Father, I'm trying to, please forgive me. I'm trying to do better. Help me, Lord. Amen. I repent. I'm asking you to forgive me. He said, how many times should you forgive? He said, seven times? No, but 70 times seven. Amen. And so God He's a, he's not a, he's not going to go back on his word. He's going to honor his word. So when you think that God can't forgive you, well, just think how many times he said how many, how, often, how often you should forgive. Not seven times, but seventy times seven. Amen. So no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how far you have fallen back away from God, God, if you would just ask Him, Father, I made a mistake and I repent, and I'm asking you to forgive me and give me a second chance. Sometimes you might be a third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. Sometimes you might even go all the way up to 10 chances. But you know what? Even if you go in further than that, as long as you're striving and you're repenting, asking God, Lord, I'm trying to make it right. And God is not going to wipe, he's not going to write you off. He's not going to write you off. He's going to get you, every time you make a mistake, amen, just remember the mistake you made and don't make that same mistake again. Amen. And if you make a mistake on something else, ask him to forgive you. Don't wait until, it's, until it begins to settle down in your heart. If you allow that to happen, it's going to begin to harden your heart. Amen. The moment you make the mistake, repent of it quick. That way it won't settle in your heart because if it's settled in your heart, it's going to begin to harden your heart to righteousness. And you don't want your heart hardened toward God. You want your heart to be pliable. You want your heart to be pliable toward God and the things of God. So if God would ask you to do something, you won't say, well, God, you know I just made this mistake and you know I... I can't do what you, I can't do that. No, don't think that way. That's what the enemy wants you to think. His job is easy for him because he knows if he can get you to think in his way, he got you defeated already. And what way did he, what way did he think? See, he, he, his job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's his purpose. That's his plan, to steal, kill, and to destroy. But if you go on and read verse 10, this is Jesus talking in verse 10. John uh, uh, 10, 10. Amen. This is Jesus talking. He said, I'm telling you. He said, it's the thief that coming up but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. He said, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm telling you right now, God is still faithful to them that will put their trust in him. To them that will look to him, to them that will reach out to him, to them that will repent of their sin, God will not turn his back on you. I want to go now to another scripture here before we close it. I want to go to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Amen. 
2 Chronicles chapter 7. Now notice what he says right here in verse number 11. Thus Solomon fashioned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously effected. Verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayers, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen, notice what he said, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. For a house of sacrifice. Verse number 13, If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locals that they to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. See, all these things God is saying, if, amen. Now notice what he said in verse number 14, also it's still apply the same principle. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. He know that people are going through so much right now. And so he said, if my people, if my people, amen, let us change that and say, God, we are your people and we are praying. We are seeking your face. We are turning from our wicked ways. Amen. Let us purpose in our heart, God. You don't have to look for no one else. Here I am. You can use me. Because God is looking for someone whom he can show himself strong through. Amen. And why not let that be you? You be that person that God can use in these last days. You be that person that will say, Lord, you don't have to look no further. Here I am. You can look through me. Send me and I'll go. Amen. Many of us have told him that before in our life. Lord, send me and I'll go. I'll, I'll go. I'll go where you ask me to go. I'll do what you want me to do and I'll say what you want me to say. But then when it really boy, when it really came down to doing that, a lot of a lot of people uh, just turned back and didn't do what they made. The, they didn't own up to their promise. Amen. But I know I'm not talking to. I, I know I'm not talking about you because I know if when you told God that you would go and do what He actually do, I know that you did it. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 God is good. That's right. God is good. I want to. I want to pray for you now, because I want. I want you to be ready for tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for intercessory prayer. And, and I want you to be ready for 12 noon. First of all, I want to remind you, amen, I want to remind you, because I know most people today have those smartphones. Set your alarm on your smartphone so that you won't miss out on your time of prayer, amen. You see, I got all these times right here, this is my when I when I wake up in the morning, Amen. Then at and then at eight fifty seven, my alarm goes off for my nine o'clock prayer. They give me two minutes to get to get myself ready. Now they give me three minutes to get myself ready to pray, Amen. And then at eleven fifty seven, my alarm goes off again. They give me another three minutes for my noon day prayer. Then at 2.57, my alarm goes off again to give me another three minutes for my 3 p.m. prayer. You see, I turn them all on. See, I'm, I'm right now, I'm turning them on right now because, because it's time. Now they're all green. Amen. That means they all turn on right now. Amen. Why is that? Because now I don't have to worry about in the morning, forgetting, forgetting to turn it on. So if you have your alarm clock on your smartphone, you can put as many times in there you want to, to for your alarm to work or to go, to, or to go off. Amen. So instead of me doing it at nine, then resetting it and doing it, I put it 
I put I put it in for every hour so I won't forget it. Amen. And so when that hour come around, I know I got three minutes that I have three minutes before I have to pray. So I have three minutes to if I'm talking to someone, I have three minutes to wrap up that conversation so I can get around my get get to myself to pray. Amen. So three minutes is, is a lot of time. You can do a lot in three minutes. Amen. So once that three minutes is up, I'm I'm believing that I'm going to be in a place where I can be to pray. And you know, my best prayer time is when I'm traveling. That's my best prayer time when I'm on the road. Amen. So I want to encourage you to set your alarms and pray. Pray without ceasing. Men should always pray and not to faint. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man and woman under the sound of my voice. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your word, it burns in our heart. Jeremiah said, it's just like fire. Shut up in our bones. Shut up in my bones. And so, Father, your word is burning in the heart of every believer who have opened up to you and invited you in to be their Lord and Savior. And Father, many of them have let have allowed the flame to be to be dampened, or some even put out. Father, I'm asking for a reinstatement for these people who have walked with you, but for some reason or another have turned and went the other way. I'm asking you, Father, that you forgive the backslider that you will give that backslider a brand new beginning, a brand new beginning, Father, today, tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, may they have an experience that will cause them never once again to doubt you or to doubt the purpose that you have called them. But let them understand, Father, that our calling and the, the gifts and the calling are without repentance. And help us to run our race, Father, with patience. And help us to begin to focus on our goal that we are seeking to obtain and to accomplish. And Father, let your name be glorified, Father, because we're consulting you in every step of the way. We're not trying to make something happen, Lord God. We are walking in line with your will and with your purpose and your plan. That what you want to accomplish, that you can through a yielded vessel. We present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service that we be not conformed to this world, but that we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is renewed with the word of God. Father, we humble ourselves before your mighty hand that you may exalt us in due time. We put on the whole armor of God today and we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, let this same armor rest upon each of those under the sound of my voice even now. And Father, for those that are believing for healing right now, I release the anointing to drive out sicknesses and diseases right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every disease. I rebuke every virus, every germ. I speak to the blood system. Be healed right now in the name of of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that right now many are receiving this and are being, are being healed right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Father. I give you praise and I give you glory for it. Now, Father, I pray for the intercessors, all of those that are going to be praying with us tomorrow. Father, I pray that you will open up their spiritual eyesight, that they will have spiritual insight on the areas that you are uh, directing us to pray. And for the Jerusalem and for the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gifts, and for our president, Donald J. Trump, and for the 
and for all them of his cabinet members and, and our legislators, our judges, and our, our police officers, and our Father, all our leaders. May your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We bless you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to address your people. Now, Father, I ask you to anoint them for this purpose of prayer on tomorrow. And I give you glory and praise for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be listening to me and say, Pastor, I would like to pray, but I, I'm not a Christian. I never asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. Say this prayer with me right now. Say this prayer with me, especially if you were a Christian and you backslid and you want to rededicate your life to God. You say this prayer with me also. And I believe that God is going to restore you. Amen. If you sin for the first time, I believe God is going to give you a, a born again experience. Say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come on, say it. Don't put it off. Do it now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that you die for my sin. Because I believe this and confess it with my mouth, today I am saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray for you now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that said that prayer, I'm asking you, Father, that you would touch them right now. Breathe upon them, Father. Let the fire of God begin to purge them, deliver them, and set them free. Let them have an experience, Lord God, that they would never forget. I thank you for it now in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. I've enjoyed sharing with you today. Amen. And I believe that on tomorrow, Bless you too. Bless you too. Glory to God. Bless you too. All you on live me, bless you. I thank God for all of you. Amen. But I thank God for each and every one of you guys under the sound of my voice. On YouTube, on uh, Periscope, Facebook, live me, and Spricker. Amen. All five networks, I thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you all. And may God keep you. Join us tomorrow in prayer. Until then, I'll talk to you there. God bless you. Bye-bye. Amen, amen. Amen, amen.